Hi, this is Margaret Bird, and welcome to Color Quest, and welcome to the Color Farm in Woodenville, Washington. An amazing couple, Max and Amy, have created the most glorious dye farm here. And I was lucky enough to bump into them. And now I'm here on their plot of land, standing in front of this incredible row of fresh leaf indigo. And just to show you, I've had my hands all in it. <laughs> For the past two weeks, I've been looking at different processes with fresh leaf indigo, including a salt rub method, as well as a blender method. Now today on Color Quest, however, I want to try one more process, and that is with an echo print. And specifically using the fresh leaf indigo for a hammer technique. Now I have had a video here on Color Quest where I did some hammering to create an echo print, but I've never done it with fresh leaf indigo. So thank you, Color Farm and Amy and Max, for providing me with enough indigo to see what beauty it will share with me in the form of an echo print. try something I've never done before, you know, just to keep it fresh. And that is, I'm going to be making a mandala. Now, I don't know much about the history or the symbolism that comes with building a mandala, but they do make for absolutely beautiful designs. And I would like to try that with natural color. This is a great option as a project for kids to get a chance to handle fresh leaf indigo. Remember, you might want to put gloves on if you don't want their little fingers to be blue, but this hammering echo print process, you might avoid that. <laughs> it's a wonderful option to introduce children into the process of echo printing, as well as the incredible fresh leaf indigo. I had been interested in trying this hammer echo print technique with fresh leaf indigo. So that was something I knew I was gonna do. But what I didn't expect was to arrive here at the Color Farm and have so many amazing dye flowers in bloom. So I was lucky enough to be able to sample some of those as well. So I will be able to add some additional color to the Fresh Leaf Indigo Echo Print in the form of some of these dye plants. So let's walk around and take a look at some of the treasures that they have here at the Color Farm. So this entire row is Coreopsis and you can see all the different colors. We have the Sulfur Cosmos which starred in the last few videos here on Color Quest, and I'd never used them before and they are spectacular. I was so excited when I saw that they actually have pin cushion or scabiosa. And scabiosa I had never used before. The fresh leaf indigo. This is actually where Max and Amy cut the indigo for me last week and provided such incredible blues and greens in my dye pot. And they have so much here. So we'll add a little more color to our fresh leaf indigo and go see what I can make in the way of a mandala and beautiful dye flowers.
I found <laughs> the building of the mandala <laughs> a little bit stressful, not gonna lie. I am much more of an abstract artist and trying to make a design that has some geometric form or a little bit more order is not usually what I do. But I can see how this process can be incredibly meditative and I still managed. It just was a little harder than I thought. Now, although all of these dye plants, including the fresh leaf indigo, are stars in the dye world, and with indigo, you don't actually need a mordant, I would recommend using, especially in this process, a pretreatment with a mordant, soy milk binder, or in this case, I used alum because I had a cotton substrate and I do believe that that is going to help bind the colors so that you have more fastness, light, wash, and so forth. So keep that in mind. Now, protein fibers are always more forgiving. So if you're going to try this process on silk or wool, silk in particular, you probably can get by without a mordant. But with cotton, I recommend it. And 
Since I've recently been using alum acetate with the cellulose fibers, I've been so impressed with the results. So in this video, that's exactly what I used. And you can see how to do that in a previous video that I did when I used Cosmos for a echo print with a steam process. And the difference it made when I used aluminum acetate on my cotton substrate was like night and day. So I would recommend it in this if you want your design to have a little bit more lasting power. It is September here where I live in the Pacific Northwest and you can see from behind me, it is really truly a harvest time. And I keep referring to it as a sort of color bounty. I did not realize that it was going to be like this. And so I've been incredibly inspired this season because of all of the amazing dye flowers that are in the last throes of their summer glory. And I wanted to utilize these fresh flowers while they were fresh. So next week on Color Quest, I'm going to look at a bundle dyed echo print. Super easy and super colorful with some of these dye flowers. So join me next week on Color Quest as we look one more time at the incredible color that these dye flowers are willing to share with us. And now's the season. So got to use the color that nature provides when nature provides. And remember, these blue hands are going to show up in all of these videos. So forgive the blue, but know that it was for a good cause, all in the name of natural color. Have a great week. I'll see you next Friday. And feel free to share what's happening here at Color Quest with friends, other people who might find interest in natural color. And as always, a subscribe, a thumbs up is always appreciated. It helps me to keep inspired and motivated to be bringing content to the channel every week. Hmm. They're heading north. Silly, silly geese.